by a college professor. A individual uh, who had been given a ride to her car came upon the scene and uh, immediately notified uh, the authorities called 911. Orange County homicide detectives arrive on the scene to one of the most gruesome killings they have ever encountered in Mission Viejo. Robin was stabbed 41 times. She was laying in a pool of her own blood next to her car. Next to her body was her open purse. Nothing was taken. The professor is asked to ID the body. She can barely say her name. She's so upset. Robin was her student. They had very little, if anything, to go on. They had no solid leads. They could not even determine a motive. There was no evidence a robbery had taken place. The police had to assume that her killer must have known her. There must have been some personal connection, some personal reason uh, for this horrific crime. Typically, detectives would start with the people closest to the victim, you know, boyfriends, family, close acquaintances, and they would move further out to classmates or co-workers, uh, people a little further away in terms of a relationship. After months of investigation, the case drags on. It was clearly a, a mysterious, horrific crime that left the police very little to go on. And it shocked, it shocked the conscience of the entire community. It creates an intense amount of anxiety, especially when homicide detectives sit in on Robin's classes, gauging possible suspects. But true suspects never really materialize here. They can't find anybody that would, you know, really want to hurt her. She was outgoing, pretty, very intelligent. She was full of life, and everyone loved her. By all of which, uh, Robin was a wonderful, delightful, intelligent, funny young lady, responsible young adult, had several friends, uh, was destined for great things. And the person that killed her prevented all of those great things that Robin was destined for. It was a joy to be with. She was very happy. She liked to make people laugh. She was interested in writing the sound back into the early state communications department. She was the disc jockey and did the news and public service announcements. And she was good at it and she liked it. We were blessed to have this girl in our life for 23 years. Robin's murder whips into a sensationalized media storm, criticizing homicide investigators' inability to produce a prime suspect. They could find no offender. They had no solid leads to go on. There have been quite a bit of concern around Mission Viejo with the case dragging on for so many months. You really have to be aware of the fact that surveillance cameras, especially on college campuses, weren't what they are today. And you combine that with the fact that there were no witnesses and no physical evidence, uh, it made it really difficult to nail down a suspect. One can only imagine how traumatic this is for Robin's family. Initially, when the phone would ring in the beginning, like the first year or two, I would think, oh, I, maybe that's the sheriff. They're going to tell us that they've made an arrest. And then after the years went on, it just, I, um, I really pretty much given up hope. The FBI puts their skills profilers on the case because you want to ensure as an investigator that there isn't already somebody in the federal system worth looking at. But FBI profilers find no matches to active killers in their database. The simple truth is the investigation is going cold quickly. No detective ever wants to face a grieving family uh, without being able to provide them some sort of closure, some information as to what happened to their loved one. You know, for a detective, really, that means failure. It's beginning to look like this mysterious, faceless killer is going to get away with it. With all investigative avenues exhausted, Robin Branley's murder ends up in Orange County Homicide's cold case files. But what authorities do not know is that Robin is just the beginning. 2,000 miles away, and 10 years later, in the district of Wolf Lake, south of Chicago proper, he strikes again. Mid-April of 1996, a uh, person during the morning hours, a nature walker of sorts was walking near Wolf Lake, near the shoreline, when he discovered a 
new body of a female, a floating face down. She immediately called uh, 911 and both police from Hammond, Indiana, as well as the Chicago police arrived. Uh, it was discovered that the body was on the Illinois side of the lake. So the Chicago police had jurisdiction over this matter. There's not a lot of evidence. There's no clothing or any of her personal belongings left behind. Wolf Lake is a very, very uh, remote, secluded lake between the Illinois and Indiana border, an industrial area. Nobody lived nearby it. Uh, nobody worked near it, certainly at night. It was a perfect place to be alone with somebody. Wolf Lake is a small lake just between Chicago and Hammond. It's sort of famous back in the days of Capone for having body dumped there. But since that time, it's become more of a natural reserve with recreational sport and kind of a day fishing spot. Detectives arrive on the scene. She had been shot twice. Her naked body had been removed by fire department personnel and transported to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office for an autopsy. With no way to identify the young woman, detectives hoped the autopsy will shed some light. They found no identification anywhere near her body, no clothes. It was a mystery at, at that point, and she was considered a Jane Doe. With Jane Doe's, dental records and fingerprints are typically run through police files. They had to wait for the body to dry out before they could take her fingerprints. They did discover that she had a tattoo of a heart on her body. A fingerprint match reveals the victim is 24-year-old Laura Hilaki of Hammond, Indiana. Laura had a previous arrest for prostitution in 1995, so her fingerprints came up in the system. There had been two gunshot wounds, uh, one in Laura's face and another behind her shoulder. There were bullets lodged in her body. Those bullets were recovered by the medical examiner and sent to the Illinois State Police Crime Lab, where they were found to be 38 caliber bullets. Police begin to look into Laura's life for possible clues that might help identify her killer. Laura came from a big family. She had a lot of friends. Around the time of her death, she was beginning to frequent some bars and uh, clubs in Hammond. She was beginning to use drugs and uh, getting involved with the wrong people. Whether she'd been paid for sex by her killer is a possibility, which means there's a high probability she met him in the clubs she frequented in and around Hammond. And her murder turns into another cold case, leading Chicago detectives to stop her. At Consumer Cellular, we pride ourselves on giving you fast, reliable, nationwide coverage at up to half the cost of the leading carriers. But don't worry, we've got more than that going for us. Like this beautiful store in Arizona, for example. It's the perfect place for me to tell you a little bit more about our phones and how they can become your phones. You name it, we probably got it. We have the top smartphones from all the major companies. If it's state-of-the-art cameras you want, we got them. If you want a smartphone with lots of bells and whistles but won't break the bank, we've got that too. We even have a flip phone, like the Iris Flip. We even have watches. I know what you're thinking. What if I don't have one of these amazing stores in my town yet? Can I get these phones sent to me? Yes, you can. Is it easy? Easy as pie. And for a limited time, new customers get their second month free. Call 800-918-5494. Find us in Target or visit ConsumerCellular.com to switch today. She knows what she's talking about. Pick up the phone. As you get older, your liver health becomes an increasingly important part of the aging process. We've created Dose for Your Liver to make taking care of your liver easy. Dose is an organic blend of liver-supporting ingredients and is clinically backed to promote healthy liver function so that nothing's holding you back. <laughs> Guys, it's like Dave was made for me. No drama, no games. Who? Oh, I know Dave. The best? Let me see a pic. A banking app? The banking app for everyday people. Dave gives you what those other guys don't. There's no overdrafts or late fees. You can get extra cash when you need it. Okay. I would it. I think I found the one. There's an easier way to bank and get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. Every day feels like a vacation in Pax Coastal Collections. Made with 100% organic cotton. These looks are light breathable, and always go with the flow. Throw it in your carry-on, sport it as a set, or add it to your weekly rotation. 
because some things are made for everything, especially organic cotton. Shop the Coastal Collection at wearpacked.com. I was seeing this bra all over my Instagram feed. I'm sure you're seeing it too. This is the most comfortable bra I've ever put on in my life. I love it because one, it's not underwire, I hate underwire. It smooths out your back, it doesn't give you back fat or back rolls. You can wear this under a t-shirt and it wouldn't leave any marks or bulges. So not only is it super supportive, lifting and smoothing, but you have all that without an underwire and without a ton of padding. But you're looking at this and it's available, I promise you won't regret it. Price is free with a 30 day fit guarantee at kennylove.com. Slotomania, the number one free slot game, presents the all-new Let's Make a Deal slot machine. Collect all dice, they hit wild jackpots. Choose a three-spin curtain to unleash roaming wild reels. Otherwise, a super feature. It's a mega jackpot. And collect all unique items to win the Let's Make a Deal Super Win. Download Slotomania for free now and get a chance to win a brand new car. New winner every week. If I was back at the beginning, I would choose us an issue all over again. <laughs> You're on the fence about getting your degree at SNHU. You can do it. At SNHU, having the support that I had really helped me understand what I can accomplish. After I graduated, I started a new job. My degree has opened new doors that I truly didn't know existed. All it takes is one simple step, and it can change your life. Start your future today at SNHU.edu. Rhythm is finally getting a full 12 hours of sleep thanks to Cotery diapers. We switched to Cotery and he started sleeping 11 hours through the night. When we made the switch, our baby started sleeping better through the night and we had way less diaper changes. So if you're dreaming of more sleep and you want to upgrade your diaper, try Cotery. Looking for a way to stretch the dollar? With Insurify, you can cut your car insurance bill in half. Scroll through dozens of prices and tap to switch online. That's it. No phone calls and no wasted time. Go to Insurify and save today. Meet Earthbreeze, a revolutionary laundry detergent that magically dissolves in any wash. There's no wasteful plastic jug, and it's water-free because you already have water. The future of laundry detergent has arrived. Learn more at earthbreeze.com. Grandpa's bras never fit small chunks of women. Meet the bra that you can count on by Pepper, the bra company for double A to B cups. The MVP Strapless bra has boob-hugging lifts with no cup gaps. You need to try that boob on. Go to wearpepper.com. A young student's savage murder on campus stuns the community of Mission Viejo and sends panic throughout the college. But the case goes cold when another girl turns up dead in a suburban lake near Chicago ten years later. Investigators have no idea they're dealing with a serial killer. A killer but a ghost. July 14, 1996. The body of another young woman is found in Livingston County, south of Chicago. While still investigating Lori Lackey's murder with no real breakthroughs, another girl is found in the Vermilion River a couple hours south of Old Lake. He had been shot several times. He had been stabbed. And like Laura's uh, body, it was new in a body of water with no identification. Fishermen had come to the Vermilion River, discovered her body, and immediately called the police. Her body was taken to the medical examiner there in Livingston County. Medical examiners find that she had been handcuffed and duct tape had been placed over her mouth. They did discover that she had a tattoo of uh, CC on her body. She's identified as 21-year-old Cassandra Corum. She was a uh, young lady in the Hammond, Indiana area. Cassandra Corum's family had sent out a flyer looking for her. They had reported her missing, and they were obviously very concerned about her. And it wasn't until this uh, tattoo was identified and uh, pictures of Cassie was shown to her family, and, and they identified her. Considering that Cassandra is also from Hammond, it suggests whoever killed her is hunting in the same place, but disposing of victims somewhere else. So 
during the autopsy, the medical examiner had revealed that Cassidy had been shot three times. One of the bullets was lodged in her body. That bullet was also sent to the Illinois State Police Crime Lab, where it was found to also be a 38 caliber bullet. A month later, a third victim ends up in Wolf Lake, in what is to be known as the Wolf Lake murder. August 2nd, 1996. 22 year old Lynn Huber, a known prostitute from Chicago, is also murdered. Almost in the identical uh, location where Laura had been dumped months earlier, and he dumped Lynn Huber's body in Wolf Lake. Lynn's body is removed from the water and taken to the medical examiner's office for an autopsy. Lynn shot not once, but twice. The first shot kills her, so he then shot her again after she was dead. And there were a lot of stab wounds, predominantly in the back, that again were done after she was dead. This means that not only is he getting bolder, he's also getting more aggressive post-mortem. Yet they have no eyewitnesses, no gun or knife, no real forensic evidence to find this guy. However, when Lynn Huber's body was examined at the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office, the medical examiner found a bullet lodged in her body that also was a 38 caliber bullet. All of those bullets were examined by the Illinois State Police Crime Lab, and it was determined that all of the women were killed by the same gun, a 38 caliber pistol. So by early August of 1996, we have two police departments from two jurisdictions dealing with the bodies of three women who were found nude in bodies of water in secluded areas. All of these victims have been shot by the same gun, so police now believe they're dealing with a serial killer. April 1st, 1997. Officers respond to a disturbance call between a known prostitute and her client at a Hammond hotel. They had gone on, you know, dates in the past. All of those dates uh, ended up at Wolf Lake where there would be sex in exchange for money. She tells police that they had been arguing about money. This lady had stolen some checks from a checkbook he had in his glove compartment. This infuriated him. They got into an argument during which he was chasing her around the truck with a knife trying to kill her. Uh, the police were called, but by then he left the scene. She starts telling the police he wants to drive out to Wolf Lake take me in the back of his pickup truck, handcuff me, and have sex. She did not want to do that. In fact, she didn't even want to go to Wolf Lake anymore. What she was saying sounded very similar to the M.O. of the Wolf Lake killer. The officer even tells her she shouldn't be doing that because they've had women killed up in the Wolf Lake area. While he's listening to her, he recognizes the man's name from a previous arrest. Following the motel incident, the officer reviews his prior firearm violation arrest of a South Chicago mall security guard named Andrew Ferdialis, who tells him he's a former Marine. He's so sure of his hunch that he prepares a supplemental report suggesting that this former Marine is a prime suspect in the Wolf Lake killing. November 1996, he was working on patrol in Hammond, Indiana, when he and other officers came upon a crack house. Ferdialis and his pickup truck and an unknown female were sitting in the truck out in front of this crack house. They approached the vehicle. They were interviewing Ernie Ellis and this young lady, during which a search of the vehicle revealed a 38 caliber pistol. Ernie Ellis told the Hammond police officers he was a security guard, he used a pistol uh, for work. Ernie Ellis was not licensed to carry a gun in the state of Indiana. So officers charged him with a misdemeanor and they confiscated the weapon. A judge later ordered that the gun be destroyed. The pouch. Shinesty hammock underwear. I promise you, you will have found your new favorite underwear. It's called Shinesty hammock underwear. Soft, sweat wicking, breathable underwear with a supportive pouch built in. I don't know why it's taking so long to switch, but I'm very glad that you did. Shinesty hammock underwear will end your adjustments once and for all. You don't realize you need new underwear, so you try these. No more sweating, sticking, or chafing. These are the greatest underwear experience of all time. Love your first pair, or they're free. Upgrade to hammock underwear at Shinesty.com. You're probably wondering who we are. I'm Patrick, and that's Chase, and this is our next giveaway. 
We're giving away this three bedroom, two and a half bath in the heart of the Ozark National Forest. You can win this cabinet for a million dollars cash. Go to OneCountry.com today. Sign up. Today, sign up. Or sign up. Sign up today. Or tomorrow. No, you want to sign up right now. Many probiotics don't survive digestion. That means whatever you're taking for your gut probably isn't getting where it needs to go. Seeds VSO1 Daily Symbiotic is the two-in-one prebiotic and probiotic engineered to survive, bringing live bacteria all the way down to the colon for a healthy digestive, skin, heart, and immune system. Get started today with Seeds DSO one Daily Symbiotic. Visit seed.com to order now. When you use Ibotta, there's a 100% chance of cash back. Hello? Hello? Hey, yo. At offers, shop, and watch the money pour in. There's money falling from the sky. Ibotta, make it rain every time you shop. Introducing the new Weight Watchers app. I've lost 60 pounds, and I can still enjoy all of the foods that I love. Small changes, it's a big result. Weight Watchers' new app features can make your weight loss journey easier. So all you got to do is you. Join Weight Watchers today. Everyone warned me about credit cards, but I found the Chime Credit Builder card and was able to build my credit with no annual fees or interest. My score went up over 60 points, and I bought my first car. My next goal, a 700 credit score. Join me at Chime.com. I have bad bunions. Wish they'd disappear. Bad address. Sir, future me. I have no bunions. How? Bad address. Laparoplasty corrects bunions at the source, meaning you're back in sneakers in weeks. Bad address. Weeks. The future of bunion surgery is here. Learn more at laparoplasty.com. Risks include infection, pain, and loss of correction. Wow, is that really me? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Who am I? Oh my god. I can't believe I have no lines in my face. I'm just in love with the mirror right now. <laughs> it's a facelift in a jar. I am Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Plexiderm. We've created the best offer yet with our Memorial Day Plexiderm 10-Minute Challenge. All it takes is 10 minutes to reduce the appearance of under eye bags, wrinkles, and crow's feet. People across the country look and feel years younger in minutes. Here, I don't look 61 in three weeks. And this is only because of Plexiderm. Holy s***. Like I look 15 years younger. The instant results are from naturally based silicates. Once applied, your skin tightens and firms, rapidly reducing the appearance of under eye bags and wrinkles in minutes. So if under eye bags and wrinkles make you look tired and older, try this Memorial Day for only $14.95 plus get free shipping. The first beach towel you'll ever love is a sand club. Sand free, extra large, extra soft. 10% donated for every towel sold. So the best towel under the sun supports the best causes under the sea. Get yours at sandcloud.com. I'm here today to talk to you about addiction. It's an incredibly complex and difficult subject, and there are many reasons people struggle with it. Some feel isolated. Some feel trapped. Some feel despair. Many people avoid talking about it to avoid dealing with it. But when you start talking, it becomes easier and the way out becomes clear. You can get help today by calling the number on your screen to start talking with someone who knows and understands your struggles, someone who's been where you are. So call now. No more excuses. No more dying. If you or someone you love is fighting with a drug or alcohol addiction, reach out and talk to someone you can trust, someone who found recovery. However it started, your addiction can end by making this free call. Call 800-709-6547. Coming up next on True Crime Network. Chicago District Detectives have no clue a link exists between three recent murders of local prostitutes and a college student murder ten years prior in California. The three Chicago area murders have all been committed using the same gun, a 38 revolver. 
Aaron and Indiana police have just linked a 38 revolver in their custody to a former mall security guard named Andy Bertialis. Now, the Hammond, Indiana Police Department communicated all of this information to the Chicago Police Department. The Chicago Police Detectives raced to Hammond, Indiana as soon as they could and got out of inventory Andrew Bertialis' pistol that was destined to be destroyed. Thank God it hadn't been destroyed by mid-April of 1997 when that gun was analyzed with all of the bullets from Lori Malachi's body, Sandra Corum's body, and Lynn Huber's body. And scientists from the Illinois State Police were able to determine that that gun, to the exclusion of every gun in the world, was the gun that was used in shooting all of those bullets and all of those women. It was Andrew Bertialis's gun. Detectives arrest him at his parents' South Chicago home. He was wearing his security guard uniform, he had a duty belt on, he had a badge, and he uh, willingly accompanied uh, the detectives uh, to the police station for an interview. He was glad, glad to cooperate. He felt uh, some type of uh, a kinship with, you know, real law enforcement officials. Detectives interview Andrew Rudy Ellis. So they asked him where he got the gun from. He tells them he bought it for $300 five months ago in Calumet City. He's almost matter of fact about it. They asked him, well, did you ever let anybody use this gun besides yourself? He said, no, absolutely not. The detectives then told Ernie Ellis that that gun was used to kill the three women, the pictures of whom was laying out in front of them. He looked at the detectives. He smiled, he stood up, and he said, well, I guess I'm not going to work today. He took off his duty belt, he took off his security guard badge, and then he proceeded to tell the detectives how he killed Lori Lockheed, Sandra Corum, and Lynn Huber. Having been in homicide for so long, I can tell you it's unusual to have a suspect just give it up like that. The detectives must have been surprised that he was just ready to confess. April 22nd, 1997. Andrew Erdi is arrested for the murders of Laura Yulaki and Lynn Huber. Today we're here to announce the arrest of uh, Andrew Erdellis. He's been arrested and charged with two counts of murder. And those murders are Laura Lackey and Lynn Huber. A break came in this case as a result of a report that was submitted by a Hammond police officer. It was submitted a warrant prior, and certain information was in that report that brought us into arresting Mr. Eardellis. Ernie Ellis shocks Cook County detectives when he tells them California authorities might also be interested to hear what he has to tell them. Cook County Homicide invites California's detective investigating the Robin Bradley case to Chicago's Area 2 headquarters. We received a call from the Chicago Police Department uh, that indicated they had arrested a serial murder suspect uh, involved in several murders in their city and uh, indicated that they had strong suspicions that this could be the suspect uh, involved in the killing of Robin Bradley. Ernie Ellis tells investigators about how he came to be in California at the time of Robin's murder. From 1984 to 1991, he was a communications officer in the Marines. He was stationed at Camp Pendleton just north of San Diego. He wasn't too popular with the Marines. In fact, he was given the nickname Corporal Urinalysis. It's also said that he had an odd twitch that makes it impossible for him to rise in the ranks. He was demoted instead. During his career, he was deployed in Operation Desert Storm. He was a radio operator. Eventually, in his police interview, he gets around to the night he killed Robin Grant. According to his confession, he got into an argument with some of his subordinates at Camp Pendleton, which set him off. Basically, his rage sent him speeding down Interstate 5 near San Clemente into the Saddleback campus. 
It's later in the evening by the time he gets there, but he notices a few cars still in the parking lot. Can you describe the parking lot to Mom? He didn't remember her name, but he remembered how she was dressed, how he snuck on the campus that night. He basically took a position in the shadows and waited. Robin Bradley was just a random female. It could have been anybody as far as he was concerned. From the beginning of his confession, you can hear how he weaves a disconnect into his narrative. It's almost like even though he's confessing, he's disassociating himself from any real responsibility. This is textbook sociopathic behavior. And so as anger builds to rage one night, he drives up the I-5 and murders an innocent girl. But he realizes he has to be more careful if he doesn't want to get caught. He has to prepare better and select the victims that will cause the same mass media hysteria that Robin's murder created. So he decides to focus on prostitutes, runaways, people more difficult to trace. He rents a storage locker in San Diego to better organize and hide his weapons. He starts using a gun and stabs his victims after the fact. There's less chance of blood spatter once the heart has stopped beating, and therefore less chance of being caught. And hunts in cities further from town hunting. Some are deeper in the California desert. Some are less busy than a college campus. He finds his second victim in the Coachella Valley, in Cathedral City, just south of Palm Springs. There's no shortage of prostitutes and runaway girls in Cathedral City. It's a very transient area. The second victim is Julie McGee. A known prostitute around town. I had a 45, I had a 45 I picked it up, and then one person got it, and I told her to get out. She walked towards the desert, and I was still in the plane, and I heard it went off. How many times did you get shot? Uh, she was shot just once. But Julie, like Robin Brandley before her, was destined to become another California cold case. It's only a few months later he starts again in San Diego. Mary Ann Wells is a single mother, mature student. And she moonlights as a secretary's worker. Marianne Wells was left in an alley in an industrial area of San Diego, California. He's getting more confident, but along with his arrogance, his urge is now impossible to resist. He's going to keep killing until he gets stopped. In Palm Springs, Ernie Alice finds his fourth and youngest victim, 18 year old Tammy Irwin. Tammy Irwin was left in the desert in the Palm Springs, California area. So I remember her name was Tammy. We got out of the car. Did you have a 45 with you when you were outside the truck? In my hand. So the girl pointed at her and said, I've got my gun now, but I know she's standing there. Next thing I know, the girl just pointed at her again. The bodies of Julie McGee, Mary Ann Wells, and Tammy Irwin were found to have 45 caliber bullets in them. Those bullets were determined by authorities in California to be fired by the same gun. When Marianne Wells' body was discovered by San Diego police, there was a condom near her body. DNA samples were obtained from him, and it was discovered that it was the DNA of Andrew Ferdialis. So you had physical evidence that linked Ferdialis to the Marianne Wells' murder, coupled with the ballistic evidence that linked her murder to Julie McGee and Tammy Irwin, coupled with his detailed confessions to killing all three of those women. And by the end of April 1997, everybody knew that Andrew Ferdialis was a serial killer leaving victims in both Illinois and California. He kills again on a return trip to California in March 1995. Her name was Denise Manny, a known prostitute in Cathedral City. Hers was by far one of the most gruesome crime scenes they found. She was mutilated, shot through the mouth, and left in the desert. He talked about how he had killed Denise Manny with his second 45 caliber pistol. He left this pistol in a locker storage facility of sorts in the Palm Springs area, where he kept that pistol, a machete, 
throw shovels, flying things of that nature. He would keep this storage locker there on strength with all of these tools of his trade so that he wouldn't have to take him on a plane back to Chicago. With each killing, he becomes more and more confident he can't be caught until that one victim rattles his confidence. He confesses to detectives that one girl in California actually got away. Did you know that old-fashioned laundry detergent can contain up to 80% water? We at Earth Breeze created our dissolvable laundry detergent because we already have water. We even have a money-back guarantee. Time to switch to Earth Breeze at earthbreeze.com. I was seeing this bra all over my Instagram feed. I'm sure you're seeing it too. This is the most comfortable bra I've ever put on in my life. I love it because one, it's not underwire. I hate underwire. It smooths out your back. It doesn't give you back fat or back rolls. You can wear this under a t-shirt and it wouldn't leave any marks or bulges. So not only is it super supportive, lifting and smoothing, but you have all that without an underwire and without a ton of padding. If you're looking at this and it's available, I promise you won't regret it. Try risk-free, free returns on all orders. My doctor told me I needed to start prioritizing my liver. Dose for your liver is a clinically backed supplement that supports healthy liver function. My stomach feels a lot better. He has more energy, he sees his grandkids more. Start your liver health journey today at dosedaily.co. Every day feels like a vacation in Pax Coastal Collection. Made with 100% organic cotton, these looks are light, breathable, and always go with the flow. Because some things are made for everything, especially organic cotton. Shop the collection at wearpax.com. Who do you think there is such a thing as free money? We gave people a little sample of Ibotta. Hi, would you like to try a sample? What is it? Ibotta. If I can just take this, is this real? Yes, you're not allergic, right? Get cash back every time you shop with Ibotta. Looking for a way to stretch the dollar? With Insurify, you can cut your